Okay, the final step is to <clears throat> paint the socks, and I've done one solid ready to kind of, to kind of uh, show you where we're going with this. So, our biggest technique will be called dry brushing. And as you can see, the axe is still mainly black, but there's little hints of silver here and there. And around all the edges, you want to make it look old and worn, so it's got more silver on the uh, on all the sharp points and, and all the edges versus just having silver streaks of paint or uh, things like that so obviously because the blade is sharpened it's going to be the most silver so the the word dry brushing uh, it implies that the brush has very 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 little paint so when you're first starting to learn how to dry brush um, you know conservation is the biggest key to make the paint come out right so if you think your brush might be a little too wet hit your heavily silvered areas like the edge of this axe and use up all the paint that you can and then when you think that there's almost no paint left in here which there will be then you go around and you can get this effect and without actually leaving a streak of paint so you want to leave just very very tiny little indications of silver so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side for you and I've started uh, I started the edge of the axe blade there and I'm gonna show you what I do so <clears throat> I'm gonna go around I'm gonna hit all the edges first and kind of get that silver sheen that you want um, you know if you've ever looked at old guns or old knives or things like that the hard edges where things are the sharpest uh, they're the most silver and so as you can see there it's a good highlight if you have any tiny little details a silver sharpie works great too um, all I'm using is this um, like car model paint um, very 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 tiny but it's very very watery so um, a little bit goes a very long way and it really soaks into your brush and this is just a, a really cheap um, paintbrush head that I use for smaller projects and um, the cheap paintbrushes for Michaels the glue always comes undone and the head falls off so, but I like to save these and uh, use them for small projects so anyway going around and hitting all the edges here and for the spikes the tips will be the most silver Okay, and I'm going to hit all the edges around the axe first. My brush is still a little too wet with uh, some silver paint left over from the edge of this. As you can see, I'm leaving big globs of paint, and that's not what we want. So you can use your finger and smear a little bit. And I've also got a dark gray here that will kind of help camouflage that and really give it that steel look. So coming in through here, still hitting all my edges. You can see that. I'm trying to film and see myself work at the same time. Okay, now my brush isn't as empty as I want it, so I'm just going to grind it on the paper a little bit. Okay, it's looking pretty empty. Now I'm going to go around and in small, light swirls, I'm just going to kind of scrub it on, and it'll start picking up all the texture of the wood and markings I left underneath. See that? And if it gets a little globby, keep on swirling it. Okay, and I've kind of buffed that edge right here to get rid of some of that. Kind of blend that out. There we go. So, obviously your areas will remain dark where there's not a lot of rubbing from the brush and by the way since this is wood and it's not sanded perfectly smooth uh, there's a little bit of wood grain that you can still see through this camouflages that so by just going over all the wood grain up here now you see it looks like polished steel and it's a lot harder to that you'll, you'll still see it when you look closely closely but it's kind of an optical illusion so there we go, getting the spike, and obviously don't worry about trying to get in the dark spots in the corners because that wouldn't wear down. Um, we're, we're trying to make it look like this has been rubbed on objects for years and years and years and years, and that nice black uh, steel color has been polished from use. Um, you know. Okay, so you see I have a hard edge right here on the spike. I want to camouflage that a bit. It's pretty bright. Voila. 
So, and if you mess this up, you can always go back and re-blacken it. <clears throat> so, there's our axe, predominantly black, and the base coat, um, that hammered black spray paint that I showed, the second layer, that's actually gloss. So, because steel has a little bit of a sheen to it, um, you know, I went ahead and uh, used that as a double whammy. Not only did it give me texture for my dry brushing, but, um, and when you dry brush, things with texture always look better than things that are perfectly smooth. So, that's why I didn't sand this all the way down perfectly. And all the little tidbits, like there's a little piece right here on the blade of wood glue that I didn't sand off. Maybe it's a piece of skin or hair or bone or, you know, whatever. So when I bloody this up um, and give it that old blood effect, then it's really going to um, give it another dimension. So, you know, when it comes to costume axes, you know, the you don't really have to try that hard, believe it or not. Although I am a perfectionist, but with this kind of stuff, you can get away with a lot. So there it is, Jeepers Creepers Axe. I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to hit it with some rust and some blood. Okay, back again. So uh, the silver has dried, and now I'm I'm beginning my rust technique for the blood. So here we are. And this is a very, very, very light thing. We don't want to make this axe brown. We want to keep it mostly silver. So I've put a little, few drops on my paper plate here uh, with some rust tone, and all I'm doing is going around and just dabbing, dabbing. That's all rust is. It's little patches of oxidation on steel. And you can swirl here and there for bigger areas. And really this isn't going to be seen unless it's up close. Let's see if you can see that. You see how on the back of the spike area right here, how it's got just a tiny dingy look to it. That's all I'm doing. You can totally skip this step. Um, I just like the art side of uh, costume making, so I'm having a little more fun with it than I really need to. But... For rust, I'm going to stay away from the edge because it obviously is getting the most use in theory, not in real life. So, and don't don't get hard lines. And I'm going to give you an example right here because I'll, I'll go ahead and fix it, but I want you to be able to fix what you mess up. So you see how I've got a nice big blotchy line right there. That's not what you want to do. You want random splotches here and there so I got my my paint on there and I'm just gonna hit the blade okay now look down here there's a patch of rust there there's a patch of rust there they're very very faint and I don't have this big brown streak so that's what I mean really take your time and put very minute uh, colors into um, or on top of your silver and uh, you know, go out and look at some rusty things. You know, obviously it depends on how um, how the rust has progressed. But, you know, us artists, we, we learn by looking at things in real life, you know. Start noticing colors. And what always blew my mind is when painters, uh, like impressionists, they, they look at trees and things. And they don't use green and brown like we do when we're in kindergarten. They make purple trees and blue trees and you know see all these different colors in nature and if you look really hard enough you can kind of see where they get that and uh that's what i really appreciate about art is you can you know beauty's in the eye of the beholder is what i'm trying to say and um you know don't be don't get pigeonholed so all right that's where i'm going to stop on the rust on that side and i'm going to go ahead and do the back side but uh, for instructional purposes, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the blood. Okay, for blood stains um, and old dry blood. I'm using acrylic paint and not model paint now because acrylic paint's got some really good body to it. And I want it to look like nasty, coagulated uh, blood that's left behind on this blade, especially back in the corners of the axe for maybe a decapitation or something, you know, whatever he's, he's using it for. So... Instead of painting over this rust with silver, I'm going to blotch right here in the corner some, some old blood and uh, get the edges of the axe. And there will be a very faint little bit on the actual blade, which what you got to think about is, which is kind of gross. But if you think about it, if he cuts through something, that blade is coming out first. And everything else, the back of that axe that isn't sharp, it's going to hit 
all that tissue, fat, muscle, bone, all that kind of thing, hair, and what's it, what's it grabbing and dragging with it. So, you know, kind of have an imagination when it comes to this stuff. You know, they always say artists are the crazy ones, right? You know? So, uh, here's my acrylic paint, and I'm same thing. I'm going to blotch it on vertically. I'm not going to wipe it and smear it. So, here we are, and this is a red and black mixture. I haven't mixed it perfectly. I want a little bit of bright red and a little bit of black, and that's it. Once again, don't make it perfect, perfect. Get a little, there we go. Now I'll streak this right here by the blade because it drug through the person's head. Sorry for the kind of graphic content. <laughs> so, and when you pull it, some of the silver kind of shows through, which is pretty cool. And I'll get a little touch right up here on the blade, just here and there. Okay, so as you can see here, it's, it's a little hard to see before it dries. I've got blotches back here, and then i got some streaking going on. So, I don't know. I'll, uh, I'll post a picture of it for you. I'm, I'm not a videographer, so I'm really bad at this. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> you know what I just realized from the movie Jeepers Creepers is he only uses his axe on one person. It's the cop when he pull he pulls the female cop out of the car in the first movie, and then the male cop, the driver, pulls him out of his cop car through the roof and cuts his head off there. But that's all you ever see of the axe. So I don't know. I kind of kind of hope they bring it back a little bit. So it's a it's a cool weapon, but once again, I I don't like the demon as much as I like the crazy farmer looking guy with the truck. So. There are plenty of farmers I think are nuts. So, uh, I'll get a little blood up here on some of the accent just to kind of break it up a bit, but I'm not going crazy. Okay, so there we go. And that's it, guys. Very simple. The axe handle is actually a little bit longer than what his was in the movie. His was about that long. So I may trim it. I don't know. Uh, Ways maybe just over a pound it's extremely extremely lightweight very lightweight so I'm not gonna have any problem carrying this around it's not as light as a foam sword obviously but uh, I don't know I really I really enjoy how this feels now here there we go all right guys there you have it any more questions on uh, painting things like this give me a heads up and uh, I'd be happy to answer thank you